One of the main problems that we find with the water today is an invasive species of plants. Uh, there are two types of plants that are really taking root in Long Pond and it's a milfoil and fan war. Um, the Eurasian milfoil has probably been present in the pond for the last 30 to 40 years and has really rooted itself in over 200 to 300 acres of the water. When you go into the shallower areas, I mean, it is, you can't miss them. I mean, they float right to the top. Um, they get stuck in props. Um, they've even been known to drown swimmers if they get stuck in them. So it's a safety issue, but it's also a quality of life issue. I mean, you move to the pond to recreate. And if you can't recreate the way you want to, th that's a problem. The weeds in Long Pond are aquatic invasive weeds and what has happened over the years is with the fluctuation of um, the weather. I mean when the water, when we had floods in 2010, you didn't hear much about the weeds after that because the water was so high. Part of it is the sunlight getting to the weeds that helps them grow and so and the other things are like phosphorus coming from people's washing machines that maybe aren't going into their septic systems and things like that. It got so bad before the flooding when we had uh, drought years and the water's low, then you really see the weeds and they really grow because they're getting that sunlight. And we actually had an algae bloom over near the Eagles Club on Long Pond that um, I personally sent off a, um, a sample because in those days they didn't have the testing in this area. So we had to put it on dry ice and it was anabina. And um, a woman actually had put her arm in to get some out and came out in a horrible rash. So those are the kind of things that can happen when you have those uh, nutrients that are coming from other places, septic systems, um, washing machines, and that's coming into the pond that adds to it also. The weeds in the pond are on where, where I am are not terribly bad. There are a few areas right out front of my property that further out that are bad, but I can't say that we have the same situation as other areas in the pond are, particularly the Freetown Cove, you know, some of the cove areas over by the Eagles Club, areas where the water doesn't move as much. You know, you go and you boat through them and it's, it's horrifying actually how bad it has become, um, which is just a reflection of the number of years of neglect. You know, it's something, something that, you know, should have been tackled many, many years ago. And it's a, it's a maintenance kind of thing once you get it under control. But it certainly isn't under control yet. Historically, the weed problem, I'm thinking back about 20 years. That's how long I've been doing this. It's been... Um, that long since there's been a weed problem in the Long Pond. This last year, or maybe the last two years, it was the perfect storm. We've, are, we've had studies and we've had projects like laying benthic barriers in small places to try to get rid of it, but we never had any money and we never could get any money and all of a sudden there's money, the studies have been done and it really was a perfect storm this last year and it was a miracle with all the permitting that we had to do that everything went through and fell in order and there we go after 20 years we got the weed uh, harvester into the pond. This is the first year that anything substantial has been done to treat the problem. This project came together fairly quickly 
with a lot of hard work from the Long Pond Association. We worked hand in hand with state and local officials, Senator Rodericks, Representative Paul Schmidt, SERPID environmental uh, project team, and we were able to allocate funding for the project using ARPA money that the state received uh, from the pandemic. There was a group of people that called the Lake District people that tried to get legislation passed so that they could have a regular flow of money to deal with the problem. They wanted to use a lot of herbicides in the pond. We have been told by both of the water departments that that's a non-starter, that they would oppose that in a big way. And because we feed into the reservoirs, then we decided that the path of least resistance to get something done immediately would be to eco-harvest. The eco-harvester that was contracted to do the work was an approved means to remove the weeds through natural heritage. It's a low impact on the environment uh, piece of equipment where it uses a rotating drum and a pinch pull method that grabs the weeds as a large drum on the front rotates, a smaller drum on the bottom uh, comes in contact with the weeds, pinches them together and traps them on the drum. As it rolls around, it tangles the weeds on the drum and uproots them from the ground loads them onto a conveyor belt where they can be visually inspected by a habitat specialist to make sure that no endangered species are, are coming in contact with the harvester. The most vulnerable species is the red belly cooter turtle. It has a Head Start program in Assawamset where they've been reintroducing these red belly cooter turtles back into the wild. And they do live in Long Pond and they do live in areas where a lot of the weeds are infested. The echo harvester does a really wonderful job of pulling up the whole plant and then they'll make another pass to get the pieces that float because that was a negative that came out. Oh, if you break it up, every little piece will make another plant. Well, the harvester does a really good job because it will make another pass to get those fragments and try to get as much of it as they can and as large an area as they can. The milfoil and fanwort is a very sponge-like weed. Now, I'm not a scientist, but it is rapidly growing, no matter how deep the water is from bottom to top. It has spread unchecked for the last 35 to 40 years. In the past, probably about 15 years ago, we got a little bit of money and we purchased some benthic barriers and I worked with the then Long Pond Association because it was a different Long Pond Association in those days. And we laid the benthic barriers down and did a pilot project because the state doesn't like to give you money unless you show some initiative. And so we thought, let's do this and maybe we get some more money. But the money pretty much just dried up so we didn't get any extra money, but it was, it worked in that small area, but because Long Pond is like 1,700 acres, it would um, really be labor intensive to try to do that all the way around. So one of the great benefits of the Eco Harvester is as it's pinching and pulling a fresh amount of invasive weeds, it is also pulling up old biomass of invasive weeds on the bottom. So you're getting fresh weeds that are actively growing and you're also cleaning the bottom of the pond. You can see that as the machine is offloading, you'll see green weeds and you'll also see old weeds. This is great for the health of the pond. 
And as these weeds are offloaded, we, are brought, we have to bring them to a site where they can dewater and be inspected for two weeks to make sure that no vulnerable species were uh, gathered up in the harvest. Uh, we've brought all these weeds to a local tree work yard where they have uh, ample room for us to follow our order of conditions where the weeds have to be uh, distributed on the ground in long wind drawn rows. So it takes a large area uh, for the amount of harvest that you get to lay these weeds on the ground and be voluntarily inspected for two weeks. Uh, fortunate for us, we had no endangered species uh, affected by this process and we didn't catch any throughout the harvest. When I was a kid, this pond was pristine. You know, I mean, the, the bridal shiners, I mean, if you're familiar with what those are, you know, the little minnow looking fish, um, they were everywhere. I mean, we used to chase them all the time when we were kids. Now, you, you don't even see them in some spots of the pond, you know? So the pond is changing, and it's changing because of growth, it's changing because of septic systems, it's changing because of fertilizer that's put on lawns. Um, all those reasons, but um, when you go into the shallower areas, I mean, it is, you can't miss them. Well, most of the weeds are in Long Pond because that's where all your boat traffic is. Um, there are only a few boats allowed on Assawampsa Pond. It's a drinking water reservoir. Great Quiticus is a reservoir also. It's a chain system of lakes, and uh, no boats are allowed on Great Quiticus or Little Quiticus. Um, Parkshire and Assawamps that there are property owners can have a small boat with an under 10 horsepower motor. Um, so it's really not all that traffic of boating coming in and bringing in. The people who live there have their boat on their property and they go in and out. They usually don't take that boat because it's so small they're not going to like take it out to the ocean or other ponds and come back. So there's a, not that transfer that comes like at the public boat ramp in Freetown. Hundreds of boats come in through there and bring stuff from who knows where. So the boat washing station has been another thing that we've been looking at for 20 years. Long Pond Association really came together as a whole uh, due to the fact that a large group of residents on the pond came together uh, wholeheartedly to create a lake district and try and do something about the weeds. Unfortunately, it didn't pan out legislative wise and one of the benefits of uh, those people organizing was bringing everybody together. They really raised community awareness and uh, gave us the steam to really come together and bring everybody together to, to form a nonprofit. I've always had a really good relationship with the Long Pond Association and the new Long Pond Association that just formed, they have really gone great lengths to get their 501c3, which is nonprofit, so now they'll be eligible for grants and things like that. Or if there's a big grant out there, they might have be able to raise the money to get a match. You don't get a big grant without having some input, so they would be able to do something like that. And they're the ones that did all the work to get that weed harvester into the pond. And now going forward, they want to educate the people of what everyone, homeowners around the pond can do to help keep it that way. They're gonna educate everyone that lives around the pond on the things they can do to help to keep it down. The Long Pond Association was started to mainly protect the health of Long Pond, to do something about the invasive species. To accomplish that, we've been working with the town of Lakeville, 
uh, conservation commissions, uh, the Aswamps at Pond Complex management team, and Serpin. The town of Lakeville has numerous projects in the works with Serpin, one of them being the weed mitigation in the Namaskit River, which was completed last year. One of their uh, second priority plan projects is removal of sedimentation from the Namaskit River. All these projects stem from the 2010 flood that we had, a hundred year flood that closed uh, all the roadways around here, damaged millions of dollars worth of property. Long Pond drains into Assawampsa and therefore Assawampsa drains into the Namaskit and it all runs down river. The Namaskit is a very shallow river, uh, low elevation, so the water moves very slowly. And the weeds and sedimentation there have built up over time and it really slows down the draining of Long Pond. I got involved with uh, Serpid because they were working on the climate study. And the climate study mostly was to deal with the flooding. So they, there was an enormous amount of uh, time and all the towns got together, everybody participated. So for me, it was an opportunity um, because they were asking for people from the community to get involved. So I started to go to the meetings and then I, when I was realizing what they were doing, I just said, hey, if you're going to start doing all this drainage work and culvert work, you really have to talk about the weeds in the pond because if you don't deal with the weeds in the pond, you're also going to have a big problem in Assawamsit, Quiticus, Little Quiticus, because it's going to become the major highway. So they, they heard that. If you enlarge the culverts, a lot of the weeds are going to flow from Long Pond into Assawamsit, which is a reservoir. So at most of the uh, open meetings that Serpa was had, we were always bringing these questions to the forefront. And working with their environmental team, we were able to establish doing something about the weeds first with the sedimentation removal of the Namaska River and getting these two projects funded and taken care of first before they move down their list of their priority plan. When they got money uh, from Senator Rodericks, one of the things he wanted to do was to do a couple of things quickly this year if we could. And one of the projects was, you know, do some eco harvesting in the pond. So we were able to uh, get our um, permits, which was two weeks of not a lot of fun, <laughs> but we managed to get it done. These invasive species, a benefit of them is that they are rich in nitrogen, rich in um, phosphorus, and they're a excellent compost. So as they grow in the water, they take up a lot of volume. They are like a sponge. As they grow, they really bush out. Once you pull them out of the water and they dewater, they really compress. And it, it's comparable to seaweed from the ocean, which is a excellent fertilizer as well, rich in nitrogen, so as these weeds dewater and we have to uh, voluntarily monitor them for after a two week period, they really uh, decompress and turn into a small amount, which at that point, we're bringing them to the town transfer station to be mixed in with uh, compost available for all town residents to come and take some and use them in your garden, uh, flower beds, what have you.
this year the echo harvester was a pilot project to see how it would go because the um, permitting took so long and it wasn't until the last minute and they came in but now there's a five-year permit so we're going to have the weed harvester come back again and do a bigger area and hopefully every year they'll do different areas and they have a lot of volunteers they're going to monitor how the weeds are doing, if they're coming back in certain areas, if they're not coming back, um, and each year where the problem area is to try to get to so that we eventually, we have a wonderful, healthy long pond. We all want to take care of long pond. And moving forward, we're working together as a community to really establish a maintenance program. We want to actively do something about these weeds every year because they're not going away. The weeds are here to stay. They're an invasive species and you can never get them all. They will actively grow long after I am dead and gone and my children will be here taking care of the weeds as well. So we want to actively do something every year uh, to, to maintain the health of the pond. If left unchecked, it could turn into a swamp. It didn't do everything we were hoping it would do this year, so we still have to do some tweaking as far as that's concerned. But we're going to keep at it. You know, we still have funding for next year. And then beyond that, you know, we'll probably have to start running down grants and doing fundraising and things of that nature to keep it up. I'm very thankful for all the help that we've received from the community, from our state and local officials. We have had nothing but support. And in a short amount of time, we were able to formulate a plan, get it approved by multiple agencies, and successfully complete it with no major obstacles. Our largest obstacle in this plan was the weather. We had a couple of bad weather days and we worked through them. There are a lot of pros and cons that we learned from this and one major takeaway that I want everyone to understand is this was our test year. We were allocated two small spots and the only way that we can quantify our progress is how much weeds we were taken out of the water. And we took out around 100 cubic yards of weeds, which is a very small dent in what is in the pond. And there's a lot of work to be done. The weeds are actively growing in the water, and it may not look like we did a lot, but for what we accomplished, it's monumental. In the future, it's really important that we all join together with uh, the Long Pond Association because they have done something that we've been trying to do for 20 years, and they got it done. So they are doing a wonderful job. Um, you can join a membership. I don't live there. I have a membership because I think it's important. It's a Lakeville resource, and it's important. It's a beautiful Lakeville resource, and I think it's important that we try to help keep it clean and healthy.